Hey everyone, Paul Bertarelli for AvWeb. And since AirVenture didn't happen this year, we're continuing our series of virtual trade show videos. Today we're in the virtual trade show booth of Precision Flight Controls. They were established in 1990 and they're vertically integrated with all of the design, manufacturing, and software writing done uh, right in house. PFC produces fixed wing and rotary wing simulators across a range of types, and these are both generic and type specific sims. And here I'll bring in Mike Altman, who's the company CEO. Mike, uh, before we get to specific sims, of which you have a lot, tell me about this coalescence you're working on. This is a really fascinating thing. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah, Mike Altman here at Precision Flight. The uh, uh, the integration of goggles, virtual reality, and mixed reality is, is moving forward exponentially, and we've teamed up with uh, Rockwell Collins. Rockwell Collins is the developer of the Coalescence interface that works with your virtual reality goggles. And what they give you is uh, in several environments with green screen or, or without green screen, the ability to see all of your instrumentation and hardware in a flight deck without having to have a big visual system. Anyway, uh, long story short is that the coalescence is a separate part that mounts to a goggle set. And it's been used in the military and civil aviation for several years now. And they're constantly improving this device. So basically you have a set of goggles, the coalescence goes on the front, and now you can see your hands, you can see the hardware, but you don't see anything you don't want to see. So if we're in a Cessna 172 or we're in a helicopter, we're able to see all the hardware, reach out, see where our hands are at. It's like being in the real world without having all the external infrastructure. And so you're going to be applying that more and more to uh, civilian type simulators. Correct. Yeah, you'll see that coming out next year with a variety of uh, fixed wing, meaning single engine and multi-engine turboprop and jet aircraft. And let's move on now to uh, some of the simulators uh, that you have. Um, you've recently come out with some new models and uh, what are they? Correct. Uh, we've been doing more work and type specific trainers, more towards uh, level FTD level five and six. We have new caravans out now with uh, the Garmin equipment in there. We have uh, analog, like I said, in Garmin. We also have uh, some new King Air product out there, the C90 and the B200, both uh, analog and G1000 equipped because there's been a big move to retrofit a lot of those aircraft. And we have the Kodiak, which has been out for a couple of years now which is, uh, as you all know, it's a, it's a, what would you call it, a light transport type aircraft, and that's been doing really well for us. And these are all type-specific trainers. We have a blend of uh, real aircraft components along with simulated components. And wherever we can uh, save money is that's where we'll try to cut the best deal when it comes to hardware and functionality. All of our functions in the software and hardware are there. There's nothing missing. We try to make these no-nonsense trainers. We spend an awful lot of time replicating the real parts. So we have backlit panels, we have integrated motors, we have control loading, three axis control loading, and options for uh, uh, three and uh, six off motion platforms. We've been doing that for years. Yeah, now tell me about, um, from a uh, sales and marketing promotion point of view, when you go to sell someone a motion platform or a non-motion platform and who buys what and why? Right. Uh, a lot of people use it. it in AATDs, it's not a necessity. You can get away with a lot less. But adding that additional feature, the seat of the pants feel where we can put control loading in and we can add the motion in there, it just adds that much more realism to the environment. Other things that we'll be improving as well is on the sound systems. Uh, that's been lacking for years in a surround sound environment. So you're going to see more, more real-time uh, experience in our trainers coming out first quarter of next year. As, the, as this technology goes forward, um... Does the, do the visuals get good enough and, and the supporting uh, training material get good enough to not even need a motion base? Correct. Yeah, it's not mandatory, but it's a very well accepted. Yeah, if we had, uh, if you looked at numbers, better than 50% of our clients take the motion. Okay, they like the stall effect, the parasitic drag, the landing gear extension and feel, uh, the ground effects that it offers, stall effects that it offers, uh, high speed buffet if it's there. The controls and the feedback all do that now. Even at the AET level, again, where it's not required. 
In addition to the, the basic simulator for fixed and rotary and motion, non-motion, you, you offer a lot of other supporting materials. What are some of those products? Well, we have uh, high-end performance computers, which we've been building for years. We take the best spend of plot, uh, products that are out there, motherboards, video cards, uh, operating systems. We build a high-end PC so we get the best fluidity, not only in the instruments, but in the visuals. You're gonna to find today's visuals are far superior than they were even a year ago. So we use X-Plane 11, which uh, has been our core software for many years, and we have enhancements in there too. So uh, we can control the environment, and then we go beyond the environment by adding all of our features and systems through a plug-in technology, which most companies use. So we can, accurately represent electrical systems, hydraulic systems, pneumatic systems, just about anything that's in the airplane is done by us. So we use the core software for visuals and flight modeling, but the aircraft and systems are all designed by us. The additional uh, features are we have, 40, we have 45 different flight models right now. And the, the way we configure our simulators, they're somewhat modular. They're not gonna be, the generic simulators aren't gonna give you the type specific look, but they're gonna give you the flight model, uh, accurate panels to start and stop the airplane with as far as master panels go. You're going to have uh, a variety of different throttle quadrants that we offer for single multi-engine, turboprop and jet, also veneer controls, and they're all interchangeable within a matter of minutes. So you can go from a 172 to a Baron in about uh, 10 minutes. So we, the, the functionality is there, it's easy to set up, and you can locate the airplane basically anywhere in the world in real time with real weather, or uh, you can set the simulator up any way you want. It's, it's kind of common across the board, but the functionality there is so deep that most people only use a fraction of it. Now, is there a lot of customization available too? Uh, customization we can offer uh, if uh, somebody wants a specific flight model, uh, we can do that. If they need uh, uh, type specific panels, we engineer those. We actually design all of our PC boards in house, the backlit panels, and the integration. So we control the whole environment from the PC board, the firmware, to the software, to the integration with the with the soft with the uh, uh, flight simulation software. Despite the pandemic, Precision Flight Controls has maintained a full production schedule, and here's the contact information for the company. So you'll find someone to pick up the phone and answer emails. Expect to see the company in the flesh as soon as public events resume. For AdWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli for the Virtual Trade Show. Thanks for watching.